in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Divine positioning is very important. It was through divine positioning that Ruth met Boaz. Is that true? Naomi gave her a counsel. It was through divine positioning. Help this woman. You can imagine an elderly woman like this. Ah, but the devil is wicked. Mama, I bring you deliverance by the power of God. And I command this devil that has harassed your life maybe her children are here in the name of Jesus be completely healed now yeah. hallelujah now hear me one of the ways that Satan puts us in bondage is to create a problem that will force you to go and meet the devil for an answer I shared a scripture with them in Gombe that I want to bring out here Genesis 42, verse 1 and 2. Please be patient. We're almost done. Give it to us, please. Genesis 42, from verse 1 and 2. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn, where? The problem is not corn. The problem is the location. There was corn, but where the corn was, was Egypt the Bible says and Jacob told his sons why do you look upon one another verse 2 read it if you are a Christian and he said behold I have heard that there is corn where in Egypt get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die listen I want to pray over the issue of supplies and resources in your life can i tell you there is only one reason why god's covenant people will go to egypt hunger hunger can take a prophet and his children to the place of bondage how do you think they became slaves in egypt when the devil sees your integrity in ministry when the devil sees your integrity as an individual he will cause hunger where you are and make sure that the only place that there is food is the place where God says you should not go to. And if you don't have an alternative system of supply, hunger will always take the sons of the prophet to Egypt. I know you don't want to do the business. You know it's an ungodly business. But when hunger comes, the day your wife looks at you and says, my husband, don't let us die like this. You wouldn't know when you would get into the drug business. Remember, you vowed that I, I wouldn't be involved in this. I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. One of the ways that Satan makes God's people slaves is to make sure there is hunger everywhere and then there is corn only in Egypt. The sons of the prophets went to Egypt in search for corn. They enjoyed abundance for a few seasons and became slaves there for 430 years. All in search for corn. The foundation of the journey that ended up in slavery was the search for corn. Hunger is a serious issue. Are you ready to pray? Father, open me up to a way of escape financially by your favor so that I will not have to go down to Egypt in search for God. Please open your mouth and pray.
Compromise is inevitable when there is hunger. Compromise is inevitable when there is hunger. Father, send the raven that will bring me bread at Brook Charity. Send the raven that makes for my supplies in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, many of our loved ones started well. Is this hunger that took them to Egypt? In 2015, they told you there is one small charm. It's not very complicated. They will just give you. And you say, God forbid. But now that the pandemic has come and hunger is biting hard, you are considering going back. You say, you know what? Just give me whatever it is. Let it work. Can I tell you, a desperate person is usually a victim. Has God helped somebody that you will go forward? The last prayer you are going to pray and then I will turn for sake of time and lay my hands over our prayer request. The last prayer, listen carefully. You are going to pray for the gift of men. Hi. I wish I had time to teach you the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers as far as your destiny is concerned but write this down if you can or memorize it all blessings come from God through men to men nothing comes directly from God to man including Jesus he didn't come from God to a man he came from God through a human vessel to men all blessings Every testimony in your life that will ever manifest will come from God through men to men. That means if God says yes and a man says no, your yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. God must say yes and a willing vessel also say yes for yes to manifest. The spirit and the bride say come. If the spirit says come, there must be a bride also to echo come. The spirit says be lifted. There must be a bride on earth who says be lifted. Are we together? For many of you, God has said yes already. But the helpers of your destiny are not there to say yes to. God said yes to your job since 2018 but the destiny helper who will stand in partnership with God to say yes has not been there please listen to me there is no destiny helper who comes on their own they are called by prophecy when Jesus Christ was on his way to Golgotha your Jesus he got to a point where because of the beatings he had been bleeding had no strength to carry the cross your bible says he collapsed with the cross there and i hope you know that if jesus died on the ground he could not be a cause for us because the condition for him to be a cause is that he hangs on a tree not on a ground jesus was weak but he needed to die in golgotha and suddenly a destiny helper came called simon of cyrene and helped him carry that cross and that was how he arrived there even your Jesus needed a destiny helper to lift him there otherwise salvation when the dead body of Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross there no prayer warrior could bring it down it took another destiny helper with influence and access called Joseph of Arimathea to use his influence with government to bring down the body of your Jesus and so that he will be buried in a virgin tomb otherwise he would have remained on the cross you will not be able to say oh death where is your sting because you he would not even have gone to the grave can I 
I tell you this? Please listen carefully. Destiny helpers are the midwives between prophecy and manifestation. A destiny helper is an individual or groups of individuals anointed, ordained, and commissioned by God to hold your hands and help you scale through to the next level of your life. No matter how anointed you are, you will need the ministry of destiny helpers. In one minute, let me look for my message on destiny helpers. But let me do a one minute summary of the four kinds of destiny helpers you need in your life if you will ever rise and move to a notable position. Number one, you need divine connectors. According to 2 Kings chapter 5, divine connectors do not have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. The little slave girl, the Bible talks about Naaman, a captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man, but he was leprous. He took a little girl, a supposed non-entity, to recommend him to prophet Elisha for his healing. Can I tell you this? Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who has the power to help you. The key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment because there are times that they will not carry a form that is appealing. Number two, the second group of destiny helpers you need in your life, they are called men of influence. These are people who their credibility and their endorsement becomes a leverage for you to rise to another, another dimension. One man's signature can end these many prayers of a job. The job is not in heaven. It's on earth somewhere. Somebody can sign and say kindly assist and leave his signature. And the person he's sending you to, he was the one who lifted him. These, these are the wisdom systems that believers don't understand. This is the world of men. You need men and women of influence. People who can use their credibility and their track record to provide a leverage for you. The third group of destiny helpers you need, they are called gifted men. The assignment of gifted men is to bring efficiency to your life and take away wastages and leakages. Many of you in business have so many people, some of them your relatives, but they are not gifted and skilled people. You need men in the spirit of Bezalel. They produce efficiency to whatever you are involved with. The greatest corporations in the world, they know this, and they pay whatever price to source for gifted people. Are we together? David, that you talk about in the Bible, who later became king. You go and read about the Benjamites from where he came from. Historically, there were people who were so skilled in using slings. It was written historically that they were so good, they could diverge arrows with slings. Like you shoot an arrow and he can use a sling to diverge it. Don't you think he just killed Goliath? There was skill that was at work there. The anointing speaks louder when it comes on a vessel that is gifted with unskillful. When the vessel is not gifted, you will make the anointing look inefficient. You need people of skill. You need people of capacity. Number four, which is very important, the fourth group of destiny helpers you need to rise in life, they are called burden bearers. Can I tell you, this unique group of people, their assignment is not to move you forward. Their assignment is to stop you from going backward. Burden bearers are people who are in your life not for the glitz and the glamour of what you represent. They are the truest group of people in your life. They love you for who you are. They will not only stand with you, they will fall with you. Listen, when Jesus, as he was moving around as a celebrity, the Bible says, they told him when they ate bread, remember, you will be king over us. He had to run away. A few months later, the same people looked at him and said, crucify him. Jesus was watching the people who ate his bread. 
They said, yes, we are the ones. Crucify him. They even released an armed robber in exchange for Jesus. Don't get carried away that because a crowd is clapping for you, they love you. They only love themselves through you. No matter who you are in life, a time will come when you will be headed for that cross. And at that time, when Jesus was going to the cross, my question is where was Lazarus, who he raised from the dead, that he could not identify with him in the time of pain? Where was the woman with the issue of blood? Where was the centurion? Where were the people who came at his crusades? All of them ran away. There was only one person and two people I would say among the many people who were with Jesus John the beloved and Mary his mother that's it can I tell you woe betides a man who does not have a burden bearer to cry with you there are many people today who were managers and directors they kept celebrating the glitz and clamor of psychophants and they ignored the people who truly love them now that all the fame has gone away they are alone you see people in old age and there is nobody who believes in them enough to say we are going to die here can i tell you the truth it is your prayer that number one god makes you a burden bearer to someone and then number two that god brings burden bearers these are the people who you can sleep with both eyes knowing they will die with you there most of the great leaders in the world have died depressing deaths because they spent their lives enjoying celebration. But towards the end of their life, they discovered that everybody was just looking for something. Look at politicians. In the height of their politics, they have everybody saying, um, greeting them. The moment they lose election, at that point, everybody plus their aides say, now that you have lost, it's not my fault. A luta, a luta continua, you say. And you see a lot of people stay in frustration. How about men of God? When God calls you, you see people coming with you. But challenges hit the ministry. And you found out that nobody is left. You need burden bearers. I had to pray that prayer for my own life. Can I tell you the truth? You will be scared of yourself is everybody around you is just looking for what you carry there must be people who love you for who you are that will be our last prayer point you are going to pray and cry for destiny helpers and list these four groups of people divine connectors men and women of influence gifted people and more importantly burden bearers lord i need to move to the other side of my destiny send me this group of people go ahead and pray outside go ahead and pray go ahead and pray send me divine connectors who will connect me to the men and the women that can help me send me men and women of influence whose credibility will provide a leverage for me in life Send me gifted people, oh God. Finally, send me burden bearers. That when I cry, let someone be there to cry with me. When I rejoice, let someone be there to rejoice with me. In the name of Jesus, I declare over you that as you have prayed, some of you beginning from today, the sun will not go down until this group of people begin to find you. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. Please rise up on your feet if you can. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. It says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known don't assume that God knows it let your request be made known now please look at me carefully this is the most accurate representation of your desires no matter how I prophesy I see in parts 
no matter how I intend to bless you, there is a limit to what God can show me. But you are the one who wrote this by yourself. It is the most, it is the most focal representation of your desire, even your most desperate desire. The Bible says, "On to him that answers prayer shall all flesh come." I want you to stretch your hands to the altar here, and in one minute begin to pray. Those outside, stretch your hands to your screen, and now you begin to pray. I'm going to bow my knees prophetically, and I'm going to agree with you. You don't have to kneel. You just stand and pray. I will do the kneeling. This is how you will know God visited you. Stretch your hands. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come. Stretch your hands and declare, Lord, you are answering my prayers and giving me rest round about. You are answering my prayers and giving me rest round about. You are answering my prayers and giving me rest round about. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray and I want you to agree with me with a resounding amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I bring before you the petitions, the tears, the requests, the pain, the points of concerns of your people. I'm kneeling on their requests. These are the reasons why they have cried. For some, these are the reasons why they have been starved of sleep. For some, this is the reason why their homes are almost tearing apart. For some, this is the reason why they have not found joy all through this year. Oh God, I pray. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, answer every one of these requests. Answer every one of these requests. In the name of Jesus Christ, every human agent who must partner with the Holy Spirit to allow for answers of this prayer, we command their ministries right now. In the name of Jesus, and every wicked spirit responsible for this pain and these tragedies here written and represented, I decree in the name of Jesus, their hands and their influences are taken out of this request. By the power of prophecy, I declare unto you that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. These Egyptians you see today, financial Egyptians, marital Egyptians, health Egyptians, you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. In Jesus name I pray. Please lift your hands and let me speak prophetic words over you as we wrap up. In the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. Every door that has been closed over your destiny. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. I speak over those doors. Be open now. Be open now. Everything that has left your life that should not have gone by the power of prophecy between now and the end of April, I command them to return back to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
he said why seek ye the living among the dead everywhere you have been searching wrongly may my God redirect you to the right place let me pray for those trusting God for jobs in the parable that Jesus gave there were others who were sitting idle and he told them why sit ye idle and they said no man employ us and he said they should go to the vineyard when the master speaks there must be space for you I decree and declare all those trusting God for jobs between now and the next three months may the Lord give you supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ two more prayer points the kind of honor that you have never seen in your life I call upon the God of my covenant may that man to rest upon your life by this grace for honor let shame and reproach be driven far from your life finally I pray for you according to Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the favor that you need to excel in life may that favor rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ shortly I'm going to be leaving but the testimonies that will erupt from this time you will keep testifying till the remaining part of this year in the name of Jesus Christ the final prayer I'll pray for you is over your spiritual life we cannot end this meeting without speaking over your spiritual life I did speak yesterday but let me speak again let me encourage you to cultivate a fire and a passion for the things of God your prayer life must be up and doing your word study life must be up and doing your passion for the house of God must be up and doing are we together now separate yourself from wrong relationships that will not help you to grow spiritually I declare fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh grace to study the word like never before may your love for Jesus multiply more and more may you have results in your Christian life I cultivate passion for the house of God in the name of Jesus Christ and for the leadership and membership of house on the rock may the hand of God rest upon you you will go from glory to glory Bouchy State will keep going from glory to glory may the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus thank you for receiving me may the Lord bless you in Jesus name I pray Come on, Bounty, we can do much more better. <laughs> Hallelujah. In two minutes, we'll be out of here. Bless you, Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.